Welcome back to Woodhill Park again. In the past few weeks I've been working hard on my new embankment, but before I did that I had to fit out all the point motors underneath the TMD and a load of other bits and pieces that I was not going to be able to access. So it's been quite a, a job working towards this and I've finally got to do the enjoyable bit which is making the embankment which I've had great fun doing and uh, I think the results have turned out very good but uh, if you remember I had a false wall in front of it and uh, I didn't fancy any more retaining walls around the, the layout I was looking for something natural and that's exactly what I had a go at doing I made a new tunnel entrance and uh, a bit of a steep embankment but I think it's uh, presentable and I'll show you how I did it and uh, also a bit of a tutorial on the undergrowth that I added to the side of it so if you remember the retaining wall this is what it looks like now so keep watching and I'll show you how I did it grab a cup of tea and relax Another point fitted, so just give it a quick check. Working fine. Once I'm happy the resin's gone off and the sun is not going to fall off underneath, I uh, cut down the, the hardened pin. Now a lot of people use a Dremel and you stand a chance of sort of mullering up all the track if you're not careful but you can buy a hardened tip pair of cutters and they used to be called mourn cutters when I was younger in the trade uh, but uh, I think you can get them from anywhere like these are from RS radio spares but they'll make short work of a hardened pin like that and you've got total control yeah so these are what they look like, and uh, you watch, no problem at all. Seconds, no blades whizzing round, no danger of cutting yourself and cut off almost flush. In fact, you don't want it too flush because you want it to protrude a little bit just to make sure it's through. But here's the holding pin again. And there's the pair of cutters, you know, cut through it like a piece of butter, mind you. The uh, piece of metal you cut through might go flying around the, the workshop or your uh, hobby room, so you need to watch other people more than yourself. I've been thinking about this tunnel entrance and how I'm going to sort of manufacture this tunnel entrance compared to the other ones I've done. You know, I'm starting to think about fashioning it out of an old Pico. Double tunnel entrance. I've got quite a few of these and they're just going to waste and as I say the Gauge Master foam ones are very expensive so I don't really want to spend £24 on one tunnel entrance again plus this end I don't really want a retaining wall with it it's just going to go straight into the countryside around so I think this will be good enough with a bit 
work and messing around. I think I can uh, make the best of this. well on the way to fashioning the new tunnel I've nearly sort of finished dealing with the tunnel itself the tunnel mouth is pretty much finished I put that lining in there like that I mean you you can see it the cameras lighting the ring up inside but if I back away you can see it goes dark and you really can't see with your normal wires beyond the darkness but what you can see is the brick lining entering the darkness but a little bit of lining falls the eye into thinking the tunnel carries on the number I've seen where you just got the tunnel mouth and you can see all the woodwork beyond it and it does ruin it a bit so I always put a little bit of lining in just to give it a better effect. I've still got to manipulate the tunnel mouth a little bit sort of to shape it a little bit better as it's plastic it's quite soft and sort of bends around a bit so I've got to secure it in certain places just to make things look a bit more symmetrical you might say but I'm well on the way to using this tunnel mouth so, good old Pico. basic sculpture of the uh, Celotex foam. Other foams are available.
very easy to glue and uh, cut to a basic shape ready for some uh, sculpt mould to go over the top still a long way off yet but getting the general shape together working on the embankments on the left now
down the Zellatex or insulation foam and made a, a fairly sort of gradual gradient considering the area I've got to work in. So it is a bit of a steep slope but just about believable maybe. And uh, I've masked up all the track ready for using the sculpt mold. So onward with the sculpt mold.
I've got everything masked up to protect it from the lacquers and glue I'm going to use. I've also protected other stuff over the back from anything that might drift that way, like the lacquer. Also the track in front, I've protected it. But uh, previously I've done all the grass, various different grasses blended together with scatters underneath. And I'm basically going to show you how I put the undergrowth on the side of the embankment. Uh, this has all been a bit of an experiment for me and I haven't seen anybody do anything particularly like this. I have seen variations of it, but uh, this is just the way I've been doing it and what's, you know, the outcome has been uh, very pleasing to the eye. I've, I've, I've liked uh, the results, so I'm going to show you how I did it. First of all, I'll get a bit of polyfiber. You know, Woodland Scenic sell this, but you can make your own. And you tear off a size that you think might be useful, and then start spreading it. And as, as wide as you can without totally destroying it, really, into some sort of elongated shape. Just keep working at it. So. And what this is going to do, this is going to lay on the, the embankment like this. Don't look much at the moment, but uh, it will do. So just keep working at it. Turn it into some sort of fine hair net, really. Even though I wouldn't fancy this on here. Right, when you've got it something like that, translucent and well spread out, you're trying to look for a bit of a natural shape as well. You're ready to put it on. Now I have put it on without glue and just allowed the lacquer to seep through and the glues to seep through and it's it's done it. It's you know it's done the job. It's come out all right. But this time, I think as I did with the first time I did this, I'm going to add a little bit of neat PVA as well. So just a little bit of neat PVA here and there, just blobs of it. Not too much, just a bit. And then it's a case of finding where you want it on the hillside so I want it to continue on from what I've done before so I'm looking for it to sit on the hillside like this and just push it into the grass yeah, it's a bit messy we've uh, we've used glue but that just guarantees it's going to stay put once you've done what I'm about to do to it I'm going to clean my hands. I'll be back in a moment. <laughs> right, pull the magic of video on back already. Now I use, well I've used both of these to spray on to adhere the scatter. And I've used the layering spray by WWS, which is all right, but I think I prefer the finer lacquer that you can buy from a an artist shop. It's, it's not cheap but it does last a long while and uh, goes a long way really but uh, it does stink a bit but uh, it's well worth it. I mean I use this one called Windsor and Newton Professional. Uh, there probably is loads of different types you could buy but I've had good results with this one. So it's, this one's a satin varnish which, uh, you know, you could use a mat, I would have thought it made no difference. It's, it's just for a deering scatter. So I prefer this, but you could use this if you want. 
and I'll be using the scatter by Tremendous which I've had good results with is very fine and uh, they do some nice variations in colour and I'll be using two colours and they're not readily identified they are on their website but it's a dark green sort of like a, a dark green tree colour and uh, I like a light sort of almost flowery sort of spring greeny yellow and when you sprinkle this on afterwards it tends to make the sort of, the undergrowth look a bit like it's got flowers on it really I suppose so it looks like it's flowering and, and gives it a three-dimensional look so I'll stop waffling and I'll show you how I'll, how I'll get on with it well how I'll do it right You may want to wear a mask for doing this, as you say, it does get a bit stinky, but uh, I've got all the loft windows open at the moment, and there's a good sort of flow of air, and I won't be staying up here after I've done this. So, with the lacquer version, you just put an ample amount of lacquer on, until you see it turn white really. you I mean have a cloth handy but you might want to dabble the edges to get it to blend a bit to blend into the hillside like and have a bit of paper handy <laughs> to wipe your fingers and then spray a bit more on so it goes white again like that then you get the scatter which is in this case the dark green one and you scatter it which is pretty simple from quite a height sprinkling it quite evenly and you should see it just changing colour a bit Around the edges, over the top, it's slightly darkening it a bit. Making sure you've got good coverage. you got to about that sort of stage it's a case of respraying it really and just do the same again aiming it directly at the patch you're working on and you yeah so it's almost starting to look white again and then you go with another lot really Usually you may need to push it down a bit and try and if it's on the edges sticking up a touch to blend it in just so it looks seamless. As I say you want a cloth handy to wipe your finger. So a little bit more lacquer where I've been playing with my finger you 
I should be able to save some of this by vacuuming it off with a pair of tights over your vacuum cleaner the traditional way of saving it but it, uh, when you vacuum it off it will be both colours really because you, uh, you can't really vacuum well I suppose you could vacuum it if you let it dry vacuum it and then put the next colour on and then vacuum that and you might stand a chance of separating the colours again but uh, for this demo I'm really just going to put both colours on at once so a touch more lacquer and then it's in with the accent of colour really which is just to give it a 3D look so quite high up just start to bring bring out the colour in in the area you're working on and you can try to imagine shaded and light areas really and give a bit more in some places and others with the sea foam it's just a case of breaking it off into sort of small pieces that look the right size to add to the hillside really and then I just get a bit of PVA neat, neat PVA very careful to not get it anywhere right just add a bit to the sea foam like that and then it's a case of just finding a place just to tuck it in and just keep building it up I tend to place it I'll, I'll zoom out for a minute I tend to place it at the top of the hill side or the embankment as less of this would grow further down the embankment but yeah you play about with this just as I say if you find some different colours in it and it sort of mixes up the colouring and I suppose you could add anything you like, really, any... I tend to like sea foam because it looks real. It just looks like bramble and whatever. So you just keep adding it. And it won't take long for it to start looking quite random and hopefully looking like a bit of real nature that's what I've been trying to achieve a natural look because most scatters and grasses on their own do look a little bit false so you want to try and add some some sort of three dimension to it and this is what I find works for me it may not work for you but it does me so. could do a little bit of pink on that myself already pink just to add a different colour to it also if you add it to the edges of it it softens the edges of the uh, polyphone polyfibre not polyphone the polyfibre and it softens the edges and takes your eye away from the joins really
I suppose you could do it with any colour scatter you like. I just chose this as a sort of midsummer sort of scene really. So you got flowering sort of undergrowth on the on the hillside. That's probably enough. See. I'm trying to balance it with all, what I've already done, really. So, that's probably enough for where it is. So, it's a case of letting that dry and then vacuuming it off very carefully this is the part of the embankment that I've just done and uh, this is the previous parts of the embankment I've been working on as you can see going down the embankment it gives quite a good impression of undergrowth hanging off the incline with just grass it doesn't look bad but it certainly looks like something's missing I tend to put grasses that look like they're dying the further that they go down the embankment as well just to give a sort of realism that it would be more lush at the top and as you go down the embankment there'd be a lack of water as the water will run straight off and the plants will struggle and midsummer it will be a bit burnt really but all this is sort of underneath and I leave breaks in it every so often just to add a bit of uh, realism where it wouldn't all be undergrowth there would be patches of grass here and there with no undergrowth such as this patch here I left near the tunnel entrance which I'm extremely pleased with it does give a, an air, air of realism really I'm really happy with this the way this come out and that's what I've been doing continuing down with the same thing So I hope this is of some help and should you have any questions uh, leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer how I produce this if you're interested in doing it. But hopefully what I've shown you should uh, give you an insight and enable you to do it yourself.
to do now is to leave this to dry I'll add some more sea foam later on but uh, I've really enjoyed doing this and I think it's looking great but that's just my point of view I'm sure you've got one as well I love doing this this is probably the best part of the hobby I, I enjoy doing which is trying to mimic nature it's uh, quite a challenge but uh, very enjoyable when you get good results. I've still quite got quite a bit more embankment to do and I think it's going to be an embankment. I don't really want a retaining wall just for this length. Plus uh, I'm starting to like sort of natural embankments more than retaining walls all over the place because I've, I've got plenty of retaining walls as it is, so uh, it's nice to see a bit of nature. And the channel is called Woodhill Park, so I think we need some hills and sort of scenery that represents the channel, really. Now I've got to sort out this bridge. That's going to be a, a coming project, and this is going to be a canal that enters the hillside and goes underneath the TMD. So I've got to work on this, put in towpaths and uh, fill it full of like some sort of scenic water product I suppose. But that's uh, a little way ahead yet. But it's taking shape. I had to produce the tunnel mouth which is done with a gauge master foam sort of retaining wall sort of mould it comes with a couple of apertures in it that I cut one out and actually cut it down in half its length and I produced this what I think is a pretty good uh, canal tunnel I've been looking at quite a lot of pictures and they sort of disappear into the hillside somewhat like this the embankment is by no means finished I've got this canal that I've got to out and also there's always more you can add to the embankment more foliage or added realism really also I'm considering doing part of it as a cutting really so I'll be working on the other side at certain points replicating the same sort of foliage on a bank on this side of the layout towards where I'm sitting now so you can see it better, possibly some of this I will turn into a, a cutting by adding an embankment on the left, but maybe not all of it to allow for photography so I can get a camera in. 
one of the reasons I can't do this bit yet I need to add more point solenoids underneath the TMD over this area I've got quite a few points I want to wire up so I need to buy some more point solenoids or motors whatever you like to call them but uh, it was a mammoth task having to do all the point solenoids up this end so I could uh, get on with the embankment at this point I've now also moved the pylon over to the right hand side of the tunnel as after seeing it on camera it looked rather silly sitting on top of the tunnel which I, I don't think would have taken the weight very easily but uh, I've not seen a pylon over the top of a, a railway tunnel whether there is one out there or not I don't know I didn't think it looked realistic so I've moved it to the right and this substation uh, units are sort of randomly placed on the left anyway thank you for watching thank you for subscribing and keeping with the channel I'll be back with an update probably not too long I mean it is getting warmer in the loft so it does slow up progress because it gets too warm but also it does allow things to dry quicker like sculpt mould and glues and that so there is advantages in it thanks again and I'll leave you with some trains running.